Hey friends, I'm here to teach you some hot tips. Most of these are for beginners, but if you're a veteran, stick around because I may still teach you something. And the first one is serializing your prefabs as game object. Now I see so many new devs doing this. For example, here, I've got a carrot prefab that I'm serializing as game object. And here I'm instantiating it, but then I'm immediately using get component carrot on it uh, so that I can call whatever method is on the carrot that I need. Instead of doing this, simply serialize what you need from, from the get-go. So you just serialize carrot and you can do away with that now. Uh, on top of that, say you have got a prefab, uh, can be anything. So let's have a look at my prefabs here. So for the carrot, for example, I've got all these components here. Say I need to spawn this and then I just need to play a sound from its audio source. I could actually uh, serialize this as an audio source. Uh, obviously that's not going to work there, but on my carrot spawner, I could quite easily still serialize this object here in my audio source component, right? And I can still instantiate it just like normal. And now I've got access to the audio source. So this would be carrot, you know, I could do a play on it. So always serialize what you need uh, as you need it, not just as game object. And just another tip while we're here, on draw gizmos, uh, as you can see, I'm drawing a gizmo at my spawn point, so I know where to spawn them. So in my scene, I can actually see that gizmo right here. And if I move around my spawn point, I can see that that moves around. So it's an easy way to keep track of things in the scene. All right, so this one may seem pretty damn obvious, but only use awake to initialize the actual object itself. So for example, I'm just using a static instance uh, for this example, but this could be anything, right? This could be like an audio manager, an IK manager that needs specific actions to take place before other scripts can start to call it. It needs to set itself up. So in this scenario, I am setting myself up, I'm creating the instance, and then I've got a function here called do something. I've got another static instance over here, which is doing the same thing, but it's calling this static instance here from start. Now, if we were to do this in awake, uh, there could be a race condition here and this would not have initialized itself uh, before calling. So rule of thumb is never call other scripts in awake, only initialize yourself, do your own setup in awake, and then from start you should be safe to start calling other scripts. All right, I dare say this is going to come as a bit of a shock to most devs, but you should never be using a public field. There's, there's really never a good use case for it. So if your sole purpose is you would just like to serialize this in the editor, make it private and serialize it like this. The, the name of the game is locking down your scripts as much as possible. Even if you're the only one working on the code base, only expose things to other scripts that you need exposed, right? You don't want others, if I made this public, that this carrot prefab, for example, another script could come in and just assign a completely different prefab to this variable, right? Or even null it. Um, Obviously you'd be kicking yourself in the foot, but it, the whole point is to just lock everything down. But say you don't want to serialize this in the editor, that does, that's not what you care about. Uh, you just want this to be accessed externally. In that case, what you should do is create a, a, a getter, right? So this will make it read only to external scripts, but as we're changing it in this script, we can make it a private setter. And now this, is like a public field, but it's more locked down. It's only read only. Now there has been a downside until just recently. Unity does not serialize or has not serialized properties in the past, uh, but they do now. So all you need to do is add a serialized field, just prefix it with field, and this will serialize in the inspector. Just need to spawn some carrots, cool beans. There is one other way around it. Just say I want to serialize this, for example, uh, and I don't want to change it to a property because I don't want to break the link with the editor, right? It could have been a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of stats or, or settings that I've set up. What you can do is create a public, and it's going to be carrot in my case, carrot prefab, and I'm just going to return the carrot prefab. So this here is just shorthand for this. We're basically just making a public getter for it. So that will work perfectly fine. Other scripts will be able to grab that. All right, so this next one is just about iterating through a collection. And once you get to the end of the collection, you're resetting your index back, right? This is a very common pattern. I'm sure all of you do it. And I just wanna show you a sexier way to do it, which is to use the modulo operator. Uh, so you still need to clip, keep your clip index or whatever index you're using. Uh, you iterate it and then you're just using modulo to the clips length and it will just wrap over and over and it will never overflow.
So you're really only saving one line, but I use this all over the place. So, you know, uh, it's just a nicer way to do it. Okay, this next one is more for rapid prototyping. So I don't know about you, but I'm prototyping all the time and I don't wanna set up all my systems uh, properly from scratch. I don't even know if I'm gonna continue with the idea, you know? So say I did not serialize this audio source here. Um, I didn't actually even have, have, have an audio source on my, on my character. What you can actually do is you can say audio source and use the static method play clip at point. And this will take in the clip position and volume. So you can, it's 3D sound still, and you don't need an audio source anywhere in your scene for this to work. Uh, super, super easy to use and saves me a bunch of time. And to be honest, it's not just for prototyping. If you're not using an audio mixer in your project, right? It's like a mobile project or something. This could perfectly work in production mode. All right, so every time you change a transform, you need to make an extern call, which, well, Unity is doing it for you, but the extern call basically means that it is contacting the C++ binaries and doing the code there. And although tiny, there is a slight overhead there. For example, Writer right now is suggesting that I introduce a variable because even when reading the transform, you're making an extern call there as well. So this just caches it, but that is not actually the tip that I am going to tell you. Uh, right now I'm setting position and rotation in two lines, which is two separate extern calls. What you can do is set position and rotation. Now, for some reason, I did not discover this for a long time, uh, but uh, it's very easy to set them both with one extern call, saving you just a slight bit of overhead. Uh, if you're doing this every single update frame, with multiple objects, you know, it uh, may make a difference. Plus it's kind of just nice having it all on one line. All right, so this one is awesome and I use it all the time. So I've got a, a stats struct here. It's got attack power and health. So say you've got a bunch of scriptable objects of units and each unit has a base stat, which never changes, right? It's the base stat of that unit. Uh, once the player selects a unit and they're leveling up that unit, uh, they're putting in stat powers and, and skill points and stuff. So then they've got these extra stat points that need to be combined with the base stat points. So when you start a level, you combine them. Then you've got the final stats. Uh, traditionally, you would do something like this. You've got your base stats, your leveled stats, and then you just combine them like this. Uh, this is the pleb way to do it. So you can actually override the uh, plus operator and, and any other arithmetic operator, by the way, to tell the compiler what I want to do when I when I plus these two things together. So now all I need to do here is do uh, base stats plus leveled stats, and that will just run this logic here and combine it for me. So now that's all I need to do through my code, uh, and it saves uh, obviously you know doing that all the time. And if you haven't noticed, Unity actually does this all the time. For example, they've got their uh, Quaternion and their vector classes uh, structs, which override all the arithmetic operators. And also game objects override the equality operator too, which is why you might notice that equality works differently in Unity sometimes. Uh, but yeah, overload all the things. This one is another pretty obvious one, but if you've got a bunch of commonly used uh, logic, for example, uh, when I spawn my carrots here, uh, they scale in and there's also a bit of torque on, on spawn. So I've pulled that out. I've got uh, scale on awake, and a scale on spawn and also torque on spawn. Uh, and now I can just chuck those on whatever objects I want and all those objects will have that functionality without actually having to do it in each individual script. Uh, obviously it keeps your code dry. And if you've ever heard the word composition or people say composition over inheritance, this is exactly what that is. Uh, just don't be a composition Nazi and never use inheritance. They both have their uses and they should both be used. All right, so now for this final tip, uh, I feel at this point I may have gained your trust a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I made an 11 minute video on this and there was just so many people hating on me for trying to make them use naming conventions. Oh golly, my headband. Uh, all I ask is if you are a developer and you are doing public int uh, variable in lowercase, and you are doing private int another variable, uh, also in lowercase, and then you're going into your functions, uh, a third variable uh, also in lowercase. You now have three differently scoped variable types, all named using the same naming convention. So that means if you're in, in the midst of a big function here with 10 different variables and tons of logic, you have 
no easy way to know if you are changing a locally scoped variable or if you're changing a private or a public variable because they're all named the same. And then for example, if you come and ask me or another senior dev for help and you paste your code, they have to spend extra time passing to see where all your variables are coming from. Whereas in their code, they can just go back, have a look at code that they did three years ago and see exactly without actually cross-referencing and scrolling up and down to see where the variable's coming from. So to fix this, all you need to do is make your publics capital, make your privates underscore, and then your local variables can just be normal under, uh, non underscore camel case. There are a lot of naming conventions, but as long as you do these three, your code readability goes way up, even for yourself. I promise you, once you look back on your old code and you're using naming conventions, you're saving a few seconds each time, right? It adds up, it just makes it easier to read, I promise you. Just give it a shot. And by the way, like I'm not even saying use these exact ones. Like if you don't like underscores, so be it. Uh, but find three unique naming conventions and make sure that public, private, and local are different, they're unique. And uh, you will, I promise, in years to come, you will thank me. And holy moly, last time I had so many uh, people, they're like, oh man, I've been coding for 35 years. I've never used naming conventions. I I've got along just fine. Cool. But you would have got along a little bit better if you did use naming conventions. Uh, it, it, like, it takes very little effort and it makes it easier for you and everybody else to read. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you don't hate me after that one. I know it's a very controversial topic, but that sums up my tips video. Hope you enjoyed, subscribe and see you later.